In this video, I am going to be exposing myself. That is using a combination of Docker, Nginx Proxy Manager, and Cloudflare to actually access various services in my home lab from the external internet. And in addition to that, we're going to be setting up a local top level domain that I'm going to be using for my internal network for those services that I don't want completely exposed. And for both the public and internal domain, we're going to be generating SSL certificates for everything. So then when I'm traveling to Proxmox here, for example, I don't get a warning like that. And it will be Proxmox dot whatever my domain is dot com or net. My internal domain is going to be hopkey.net. But not only are we going to do those two things, but at the end of the video, we're going to be setting up our sponsor Twingate, which will allow us to access those internal domain names basically anywhere in the world. Twingate is a zero trust networking platform that allows you to actually remote connect into your local network without having to use like a traditional VPN. You use their web GUI to set up various resources, networks, add users. There's group privileges, so you could have multiple users and give them certain access to certain machines under certain ports. It is a wonderful platform. I've been using them for a long time. And if you check out the link down below, the first five users for your account are completely free. So you go ahead and try it out and see if it fits your needs for remote connection. As you'll see later in this video, all we really need to do is set up our resource on their web interface, set up a connector via Docker, and of course there's other methods than Docker, and then use a client on whatever device to go ahead and remote into our network. So again, we will be setting that up later. There are chapters in this video, so you can go ahead and skip around to whatever parts of this video you are most interested in. We're gonna be first starting with uh, having a public domain in which I will have very specific services that I want to access. In my use case, it's going to be uh, like a basic website, Jellyfin, and Nextcloud. The Nextcloud stuff is gonna come in its own separate Nextcloud setup video, but I will be showing you some tips and tricks with Jellyfin. And basically everything else on my home lab is going to use the local domain that I'm gonna set up with local IP addresses. And this is technically part three in my ultimate uh, Proxmox server guide walkthrough. This is my Proxmox server. Uh, compared to last time, you will notice uh, minor differences. I restored my Home Assistant virtual machine in here, just of course using one of those uh, Proxmox helper scripts. I do have a little Windows VM if I need access to that. And we set a proxy here. This is what we're gonna be doing everything on. This is an Ubuntu container. If you haven't seen the previous videos, it's basically the exact same setup process of our uh, serve our instance here all the way up until we installed Protainer. So you just get this, you use the Ubuntu 22.04 template, update it, set up your user, install Docker, and install Protainer. That is where I'm currently at right now with this. And this right here is that Protainer instance. You could see there is nothing going on in here. I did test everything to make sure it works. And another thing that is important, everything that you are going to be seeing in this video has a companion repository over here on GitHub within my home lab. So if you go to home lab, you go over here to proxy, this is absolutely everything that we're going to be doing in this video with various tips, tricks, all the specific steps and everything you're going to want to know. For example, here you can see my personal uh, Nginx proxy manager compose. But if you go down here and want to use the official layout, I do have that for you. As well as explaining if you want to do this in bridge mode, how that's going to work, how to set up uh, DDNS. And unfortunately, my internet provider does have a dynamic IP address. That means every couple days, my IP, my public IP automatically switches up. We're going to need that in our A records to actually have the domain public. But because it switches up, I don't want to have it crash and go down all the time and have to manually update it. So there is a little Cloudflare Docker container that we're going to set up to automatically scan our IP address and update it, which in my testing has been working great. It goes over port forwarding and how to do just about everything. So if you're more of a reader, this will be there. And of course, if you want to go ahead and copy and paste various code, this is gonna be there as well. And the main thing we're gonna focus on real quick right here is this Compose YAML. This is gonna have everything that I'm going to run in it. We have the proxy here. This is Nginx Proxy Manager. We have the uh, DDNS, this is Cloudflare DDNS. This is the container that will automatically update our IP address, our public IP address in the A records of whatever domain we tell it to. And then we have a Twingate connector here. This is going to allow remote connections to services that we don't expose to the open internet. And then last but not least, we have a little hello world container, which is gonna help us actually test our proxy. So jumping right into it, I'm just going to copy this entire thing, copy, 
So let's add a stack and then all we need to do, I'm gonna call this proxy. This is my proxy stack. And then from there, I'm gonna paste this on in. So let's paste it in. And the first thing we're gonna pay most attention to is the proxy itself. This is Nginx Proxy Manager. It gives us a beautiful GUI for actually managing our subdomains, main domains, SSL certifications, everything. I'm a sucker for a good web GUI. So the container name we have here, restart unless stopped. I am gonna be running this in network mode host. I've had the best success with this, especially if you're trying to proxy containers that are in the same machine. And I will know if you do want to run it in bridge mode, you can see down here an example of that. So network mode bridge, this is an example of changing some of the default ports. And one thing you may need to do is actually open the port within Nginx Proxy Manager for a service that's running on a separate machine. So for example, I have Jellyfin in a separate container, so I'm gonna to need to expose this port within the Nginx Proxy Manager, kind of similar to what we did in the last video with our VPN. But just to avoid all that, I just run it in network mode or host mode. The main thing you wanna be aware of is on this machine, since it is using your host network, make sure no other services are using the port 80, 81, or 443. For volumes, I just do two regular volumes. You could bind mount this if you want to, but I found that this typically works the best. I have one volume data and one volume let's encrypt. And since we are doing this in a stack, it will have the prefix for proxy or whatever you name it there. So you'll be able to tell the different volumes that you have running on your uh, instance here. Of course, we have a health check there. And really there is nothing else you need to do to go ahead and set this up. This is probably one of the easiest Docker containers to go ahead and spin up as long as you have an understanding of the difference between the host and bridge networks and some of the differences that may cause in your configuration. Next, we have DDNS. This is using this container right here from Faviana, I think. <laughs> so container name, unless stop, it does have user permissions. So I'm using a thousand, a thousand for this one. This is just my current user permissions. And then for the most part, I go with all of the default settings. So I have read only to true, cap, drop, all, you can read more about that here and in their official repository. And security opt, no new privileges, true. I went ahead and disabled IPv6 because I just don't use it at the moment. And because of that, I disabled network mode host. So now it's just gonna be in bridge mode. This makes it easier for IPv6 to work. Uh, completely optional. And then here, these are the environmental variables that you are actually gonna want to kind of play around with. Here is gonna be your Cloudflare API token, which I'll show you how to get. These are going to be your domain names that you want it to push to Cloudflare to go ahead and update that IP address in an A record. And I keep proxy to true and IP6 provider to none. And then we have our TwinGate connector. And I'm actually just going to get rid of this for now because I don't want this to spin up and throw a bunch of errors at me. We're going to set that up near the end of this video. And of course, just for a simple little web page spun up easy for testing, I have this Hello World container running on the port 8888. And then we have our volumes here, data and let's encrypt. So now for this part of the video, I'm gonna be focusing on setting up a DDNS, getting our Cloudflare API key and plugging in some domain names here. So this right here is the Cloudflare overview for the domain name that we're gonna make public. For this one, I'm gonna be blurring it throughout the video because I don't want it to be something people try to go to a lot. <laughs> because it's for me and a select group of people. So for this one, the first thing I'd recommend here is go under SSL TLS and click on that. And then here under SSL TLS encryption, you might have it set to partial to start, but you're gonna wanna go ahead and click configure and make sure you select full. Full is what I found to be the one that works the best overall with uh, using it with Nginx Proxy Manager. If you use strict, you're gonna have to use Cloudflare API keys. And I've noticed Flexible doesn't work with some services. I was having issues with Jellyfin using Flexible. So I've had the best look with full, but depending on your services, you may want to kind of play around with this. So now the fun part, let's go over to DNS and head over to records. What we're gonna want to do here is create some records. So first I'm gonna add a record for my root just like so. And for the IPv4, honestly, right now, I'm not going to put in my public IP address because I want to actually make sure that this is going to work. So I'm gonna put in something random, maybe uh, something like 8.8.8.8 .8 and then save that. There we go. So now we have that and the uh, container that we're setting up right now should automatically update that. Now, additionally, what I'm going to do is create another one for Jellyfin. Technically right now, if you wanted to, if you're not gonna use media streaming, you could set this up as a C name, put in an asterisk and then set it to whatever your domain name is. But one thing that's important to note is under the uh, Cloudflare terms and conditions, you can't use their proxy service to do media streaming. 
So in order to not break the TOS, I'm going to create a new A record. I'm going to call this uh, Jellyfin. Actually, for this one, I'm going to do, I'm going to call this Stream. Stream, like that. <laughs> and I'm going to disable the proxy just for this one, because I don't want to break their terms of service. Here, I'm going to put another random IP address and then hit save. So now you can see I have stream at this IP and then my domain at this IP without a proxy on this one. Again, I'm only doing that not to break their terms of service. So now we're going to want to go ahead and grab the API key. So this will automatically update. To do that, we're just going to go over to our profile, go over to my profile, and then here under API tokens, you can see I have one right here. I'm not using it anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this and then create a new token. This token, the only thing we really need it to do is edit zone DNS. So we're going to click use template here. Zone DNS edit looks good. Include, we're going to do all zones. And that should be everything that we need to do, at least for now. So let's go ahead and continue to summary, create the token. And then here is our token. I'm just going to give that a copy. Head back over to Portainer and then paste that in. So now we have our key pasted. Now right here under domains, I'm gonna add the root domain. So whatever your domain is, dot at whatever it is. And then that subdomain we just created, which for me is going to be stream at my domain, just like that. So in this entire Docker Compose, that should be really the only thing I need to edit to get this going. So I'm gonna click on deploy the stack here and give it a minute to pull all the containers and everything that it needs to do. So we have a success. So if I head over here to containers, we can see the containers running and starting. I'm going to check the logs of Proxy Manager, and it looks like everything is going good. So it's just taking a sec to start up. And let's check the logs of this Cloudflare DDNS, which it looks like it's good. We updated a stale A record of my domain name. And there we go. So this is DNS under that domain name. And you can see that my IP address has updated to my actual current public IP address. And that container is set up to scan your IP address every five minutes and automatically update the A records in Cloudflare. Again, if you have a static public IP, you don't need to worry about this step. So now we're going to have to do some port forwarding. We're going to open up 80 and 443. So that way Cloudflare can communicate to it and we can actually have the domain work. And I will know out of everything we're doing, this is technically the most dangerous step and there are additional things you can do to further the security. So at the moment here, I'm using Omada. These steps are gonna vary wildly depending on the router, the home network system that you happen to be using. So do note that uh, you may have to look up to where port forwarding is in your specific UI and all that. For me, it's under settings, and then we go to transmission, NAT, and this is the port forwarding here. I've already done it for HTTP and HTTPS, but just so I can give you a little explanation of something, if I click edit here for HTTPS, we have the name of it. We're gonna set it to the destination IP, which is the IP address or the local IP address of whatever the container, machine, whatever you happen to have installed uh, Nginx proxy manager on. So do note that we have our source port and our destination port. If you're running it under host 443 for both, but if you do decide to do a bridge network and do a custom port for these specific, you may have some slight changes to do. So down here, I give a little explanation of the difference between the source port and the destination port. Initiating the communication is going to be the source port. So the initiator is going to be Cloudflare. So 443 is going to be that. And the destination port is going to be whatever you happen to set that port to. So in my bridge mode example, I used 5080 and 5443. So I would set the destination port to 5443 and the source port to 443. So we have it just like that. You click apply, you add it for HTTP. If you are gonna want to use that for something, some services might require it. Then from there, we should be good to go ahead and set up our actual uh, proxies. So Nginx Proxy Manager is the port 81 for this machine. So you can see this is 203, what you saw in port forwarding there. So we'd go to 10.0.0203 and the port 81, just like that. And here's Nginx Proxy Manager. What are the default credentials? So the email is going to be admin at example.com and then our password is going to be change me. So here, go ahead and set up your account. So fill in your user and then hit save. And then it's gonna ask us to change our password just like that. So let's click save and there we go. So now let's first generate our SSL certificate for our public domain. So I'm gonna add SSL certificate. So first you're gonna type in your root domain name and click on add. 
And then I believe a wild card is going to work just for generating this certificate. So there you go. Add that with a wild card. And then here you're going to want to click on use a DNS challenge. For this, we're going to select our provider, which is going to be Cloudflare. And then here for the API token, we're just going to paste in the one that we saved earlier. If you did set up that uh, DDNS, it's in your stack. Propagation seconds, we could set that to nothing. If you have errors, setting it to like 120 sometimes resolves that but we're going to go ahead and click on save and we're going to see if it generates them and there we go we have the ssl certificates for the subdomains as well as the root so now let's go ahead and create a new host so let's go over to hosts proxy hosts add a proxy host and just the test list to verify everything's working i'm going to point my root to that hello world container so type in your root domain here and add it and since this is in the same stack and i'm running this uh proxy manager as the uh, or on the host network i could just type in localhost and this is going to be on the port 8888 now for here we could block common i'm going to head over to ssl and then pick the certificate that we generated right here and i'm going to set up force ssl just to make sure that works now actually, I might as well just enable all this and then click on save. Depending on the service you're running, you may need to customize this. I know Jellyfin that you'll see has a whole separate thing that we're going to have to paste in. But for now, if I go ahead and just click on this, boop, there you go. It takes us to our kind of hello world container. And if I get my phone, I'm going to disconnect it from my Wi-Fi network. And if I head over to that domain, well, what do you know? It's working on the open web and it's proxied through Cloudflare. So your actual IP address is going to be hidden. So now we're going to do Jellyfin. And I'm going to show you some tips and tricks and whatnot to get this to work properly. My Jellyfin is at 205.80.96. And you can see here, it's not secure, it's local, but one thing I need to do to get proxy to work is let's go over to administration dashboard and then we go under networking here. What we're going to want to do is go over to known proxies. You can see I have something in here. I have changed it since then. This is going to be on 203. That is the IP address of the uh, container or machine that's running Nginx proxy manager. And here on the Jellyfin documentation, if I go over to Nginx proxy manager, we are going to want to paste this in. So I'm just going to grab this, give that a copy. And then under Nginx Proxy Manager, we're going to create a new host for Jellyfin. So let's add a proxy host. And then for the domain name, I'm going to do stream dot my domain name, click on add. And then for here, the scheme is HTTP. The only time you're really going to want to change this is if your local service kind of defaults to HTTPS or if you manually kind of configured it to do that. So for the forward name IP, this is going to be the IP of Jellyfin which is at 205 and it is at, and that's at 8096. So here I'm going to block, enable WebSocket support, and then I'm going to go under advanced, paste in that custom configuration, go over to SSL, add the wildcard certificate. I'm gonna force SSL and just enable everything and then click on save. So now if I head over here, it should work. Here we go. Now, one thing I'm gonna to touch on real quick is something called custom location. So instead of using a uh, subdomain in the beginning of your name, we could use kind of a directory scheme to actually set up our proxies. So for the stream subdomain that I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna have a couple different services that are able to stream because I want them all to be on that A record that isn't proxied or at least proxied through Cloudflare. So with this for Jellyfin specifically, we're actually gonna to wanna to go back to where we were in our uh, admin settings under networking. Here is our base URL. So you can see, add a custom subdirectory for the server URL. For example, this is the example. And this, I'm just gonna put it under Jellyfin and then go down and save it. For a lot of these configuration changes, it is gonna require a restart from Jellyfin. So I'm gonna go ahead and reboot it. Yes. And then over here under that stream subdomain, I'm gonna go ahead and click right here and then edit it. And then right here under custom locations, I can add a location. This is going to be under the path Jellyfin. And we're going to put in some of the same stuff. So 205 at 8096. I'm going to go back and grab that advanced config, go back to custom locations and drop it in here and then click on save. So now if I change this to forward slash Jellyfin, hit enter, you can see I'm now using a custom location for the specific service. But now we are going to set it up for local top level domains. So this is not going to have any external access whatsoever. You can only access this domain that we're about to set up if I'm either actually in my home network or if I'm using some either a VPN provider or something like TwinGate. 
So within Cloudflare, you can see I have two domain names. This is the public one right here, and this is going to be my local domain. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a click, and all we have to do is head over to DNS, and you can see I already have some records set up. Right here, hopkey.net, we created an A record, and I'm pointing this to the internal IP address of Nginx Proxy Manager. So that way, whenever I go to hopkey.net and it asks my DNS server, where is this IP? It's gonna give it a local IP address, and that's how it's gonna go ahead and connect. And if you're outside of your home network and you're not using some other service and you try to access this, it's gonna just navigate to this IP address, and it's probably not gonna work unless if that person has something oddly specifically set up the same as you. For this one, I don't need to separate out A records, so I did just do a wildcard as a C name for that domain right here. So once you have all that in place, all we need to do is go generate those certificates. So here under SSL certificate, we're gonna add a new Let's Encrypt one, and we're gonna put in the local domain. So let's go ahead and add that, and then let's add it the wildcard. So star.hopkey.net. Boom. And again, we're going to want to use a DNS challenge. Choose Cloudflare as our provider and then drop in your uh, API token right here. Let's agree to the terms of service and then click on save. Do note when you change your A records and if this doesn't work like right after you did it, it probably just needs a little bit of time for the actual domain name server that you're using to propagate and know what it's trying to connect to. So there we go, we now have hopkey.net. So now I'm gonna head back over to proxy hosts and we can test it with that hello world. So let's go right here, domain name. Let's let's just throw this on a subdomain. So hello.hopkey.net, add that. This is currently under our local host and it's on the port 8888. So from there we go SSL, we could select the SSL for hopkey.net that we created, go ahead and force it and select all of that save it and now if i navigate to hello.hopkey.net there we go hello is it me you're looking for so really actually a pretty easy thing to go ahead and set up now let's say in theory i wanted to go ahead and access this proxmox right here so if i go over here let's add a proxy host this is going to be proxmox.hopkey.net this scheme is https by default whoops add that so this is at 10 0, 0. and then here 8006 to enable WebSocket support, and then go to our SSL certificate, add the one for hopkey.net that we generated. Let's go ahead and force it and hit save. So now if I click on this, go over to proxmox.hopkey.net. Well, will ya look at that? Log in here, and then you can see my domain is at proxmoxhopkey.net with a Let's Encrypt signed certificate. So now I'm not gonna get that warning every time I open up Proxmox, and I don't have to remember the IP address because it's just proxmox.example.com or whatever yours is. So now this domain is locally accessible, but not accessible publicly. But let's say I am publicly and I want to access it. I wanna do that securely, and that is where Twingate comes in. So on our GitHub page here, we removed it earlier, but I'm gonna re-add it, and that is our TwinGate connector here. So I'm gonna give this a copy, and I'm gonna drop it in right here. So here's our TwinGate connector. We're gonna need some things. We're gonna need our tenant name, our access token, and our refresh token. Now, I already have a TwinGate account. You go ahead and create one, it's real easy. This right here, mine is just techhut.twingate.com. So I'd go ahead and copy that and drop it under the name. And then basically with Twingate, there's only a few parts right here under Network Insights. We have resources, remote networks, and active devices. <clears throat> Our remote network is the main network, so you're gonna to want to create one of those. And then under that network, you're gonna to want to create some connectors. So you can see here, I have one connector that I have spun up on my Unraid machine, but I want to spin up another one on Proxmox. And it's cool because you could have a connector on like every single machine. So if a couple machines go down, there's probably going to be one that's still live that you can use to actually restart and do some work on some of your equipment while you're on the road or whatever. And then resources over here, you can see I have uh, the proxy. I'm going to edit that in a minute. These are the actual uh, services or IP addresses that you have on your network. So under overview, I'm just going to deploy another connector. And here, these are all the options to go ahead and set this up. You do have quite a few. You could either use Docker or like a system CTL service under Linux. For this one, we're going to be using Docker. And then all we need to do is go ahead and generate our tokens. So let's click on that authenticate. I have two factor right now. You can't set up more authentication methods and make it as secure as you want. So these right here are my access tokens. So we have access and refresh. So I'm just going to copy and paste these 
into that uh, Docker Compose stack. So you can see I went ahead and pasted them in right here. And then in Twingate, we can see that this connector is currently offline now. And before we deploy, I made one error. We don't really need the .twingate.com right there, so just the network name. So let's go ahead and update this. And there we go, it's running. You can see it's starting up. If we go ahead and check our logs here, see it's offline, ran authentication, and now it's online. So we can see that to be true right here. I'm gonna rename this. So it's Proxmox, firm changes. And then this connector, sorry, I'm doing some cleanup here real quick. This is Unraid. So now I do need to make an edit. Let's go over to network and we need to go to our resources. This is my proxy right here. So I'm gonna give this a quick edit. So if I edit this, this is on the port 203. So you're gonna to wanna to put your IP address for the machine that's running Nginx Proxy Manager and I'm aliasing it. So if I didn't have this already, you just click on alias and do this to the root of the domain name that you added is hopkey. And here, if you really wanted to, you can set up certain ports. Right now I just have it allow all. I'm the only one that has access to this. But if you had a machine or IP with multiple services and you wanted certain groups of users to be able to only access specific services, you could set port restrictions to specific groups. It's beautiful. So I'm gonna hit update resource. And there we go, we can see it's online. With the uh, Twingate connected here, you can see the alias of hopkey.net. And I head on over to proxmox.hopkey.net. You can see I'm not currently connecting to any network. It is working great. We can see the little lock there, it's encrypted. Let's just log in real fast. Log in. And there we go. We are now on the external web, uh, navigating my local IP address, absolutely beautiful. And just like that is the next day I have had some time to go through and add basically all the services that I currently have spun up to this Nginx proxy manager right here. And I have quite a few of them. You can see 19 different proxy hosts. For example, I have docker.hopkey.net, which this links to the actual uh, protainer or portainer instance that the uh, proxy is running on as that is our local. But I went ahead and added the um, instances of portainer of all my other docker machines or virtual machines here so then i can manage a wide variety of containers you can see 18 here 7 5 11 5 i have a lot of different things running i also got home assistant here working and again a lot of these do require some special little configurations to get it to work so for example if i do head over to home assistant within the file editor i needed to go over to the configuration yaml file and add http use x forward for true trusted proxies and then the actual ip of that proxy you see we have frigate that's the home assistant we have image we have the jelly one we just created lidar nc nzb get udu which i'm kind of testing and playing around with here you can see it's working fine a lot of these didn't require any special configurations one thing i will note is with these uh sonar radar and all those I really wanted to set it up in a scheme where it was r.hopkey.net forward slash radar and put all of those under the same subdomain, but it just wasn't working for me. That would have been really nice to use the custom location for all of those so I didn't have 19 proxy hosts. So if you do know how to get that working, I would absolutely love to know. I think torrents.hopkey was another one I needed to add some custom variables here. Just Googling found these. Proxy read timeout 120, redirect off max size 100 and beautifully all these hopkey.net domains are accessible if i travel over uh, to it via twingate if i'm on some remote connection so that is great for the public domains i am going to work on trying to find a way to hide my ip i know there are various different methods to go ahead and do that because for the file and media streaming um, cloudflare is not a fan of that so if you know of a good way, please also let me know down below or any other tips and tricks or anything I could have missed. So with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.